portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Welcome back to the Bahamas tonight. Well, public servants from across the country headed to the polls today to decide who will lead their organization for the next term. And as they cast those ballots, prime among their concerns, a deeper sense of trust and a more stable financial position for the BPSU. But the thing that took center stage, though, was the president's race. Chris Robinson picks up the story. Voting got off to a good start Friday morning as BPSU members went to the polls to elect leadership. Grand Bahamas' Alexander Barros and Kenneth Christie are trying to take the post while incumbent John Pinder goes after a fifth consecutive term in office. However, Barros and his hammer team says it won't be as easy for Pinder this time around. He says Pinder's leadership has been ineffective and lackluster and questioned why Pinder did not call an annual general meeting before elections as is customary to discuss the union's financial state. He tried to vindicate himself as to some $85,000 that was, that was shared among himself and, the, uh, uh, and about four or five of his present officers. Those same officers have presented themselves to the people again owing this union over 80, 87 thousand dollars. But that accusation did not sit well with Mr. Pinder. In fact, he and Barrows exchanged a few words outside of Kendall G. L. Isaac's gymnasium. You don't tell lies and no one review that? Come, Mr. Let me hear yeah. This is the only thing you get a campaign right. on. Yeah. Okay. So let me think. Okay. I thought he had to right. move away. What Mr. Barrows could have said to you was he saw some loans that was issued over the past three years where a person had paid them back. But what happened was the account did not post the repayments as yet and so when he saw it he assumed that three officers not me he assumed three officers had borrowed some money and then paid back not nobody share up no money secondly our constitution said we must have the AGM before the 30th of September we were supposed to have the AGM today and the election supposed to be next Friday but because next Friday is government payday and you don't get good response on government pay he and I agreed in Grand Bahama that we will do the elections this day, today, and have the AGM next week. He and I agree to that. Pinder says he's confident that he would be re-elected, even though he has been accused of being in collusion with government following a series of industrial agreements signed off on right before Friday's election. We are faced with that. That's the reason for it. Some of those industrial agreements took us three years to conclude. It's unfortunate for the members that the government or those agencies take that long to conclude it. But hey, if it's a blessing for me, so be it. Now, we were not able to get the views of presidential candidate Kenneth Christie. He was not visible at any of the polling stations we visited and did not return our calls. Meantime, members turned out all day in considerable numbers to cast their ballots. Improved representation for the public servants across the board appears to be a common goal among them. There are some things can be changed there too to make it better, but it has been going good. But I'm looking for sound representation, honesty and integrity. Okay, those are some of the things that we have that the union has lacked, okay? Nearly 4,000 members were eligible to cast their ballots Friday. Many of them say they are voting for a stronger union incorporated over 50 years ago to be the voice of government workers in this country. Charisma Robinson, ZNS Network News. Thanks, Charisma. Well, public servants weren't the only ones heading to the polls this week. Taxi drivers did the same. Yesterday, Philip Watkins secured enough votes to take the top spot of the taxi cab union. Watkins is no stranger to the executive team, having served in various positions previously. He said he plans to bring his campaign promise of attracting more members to reality. For too many years, the taxi cab union has been seen as a closed door, big boys, private little club. And uh, my trust is to prove to the nation that the doors are open and all of those who care to join would be free to join. Our membership currently is about 400. And that's sort of sad when you consider almost 1,200 drivers in the system. And so I, I, I'm looking in, in short order to have a minimum of 800 members. With millions of dollars spent to put in place new docking facilities for daily fast ferry services from South Florida, Resorts World Bimini is preparing to double the amount of visitors it attracted to the island in previous years. A new state-of-the-art five-star hotel is nearing completion and is expected to expand the product offering for the development. This means more jobs and sales opportunities for residents. Clint Watson takes a look at the expansion and its significance to that island. Bimini has it all. 
Bimini is instant Bahamas. Chairman of the Genting Group and owner of Resorts World Bimini, KT Lin, needs no further convincing that his investment is sound and will in time bring significant returns. He knows he has created a winning formula, combining his world-class high-end resort with the jewel of the Caribbean that has a total package. It's no surprise he's expanding his investment with a soon-to-open in an early 2015 300-room marina hotel. It will be a five-star, stylish, sophisticated, and seamlessly blend to Bimini's beauty and charm with modern interiors. I am informed that the rooms should be completed in December and the lobby food and beverage entertainment and other amenities will com be completed in late February when the new hotel will be opened. With the resort's hotel expansion, Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie says it signals opportunities for new young Bahamians to move to Bimini who in turn will attract the same kind of visitors. And once they come in, they will form the basis of repeat visitation, meaning they're going to like it, they're going to love it, and it's going to be a place that they will come to and make this a very strong destination. Employment opportunities and specialized training continue to increase with resorts world expansion. Some 480 persons have been involved in construction, and to date 488 persons are employed at the resort. When the new hotel opens, some 800 persons will be employed permanently at the resort. That is transformation. <laughs> Moreover, to ensure world-class service standards and high level of guest satisfaction, extensive customer service training will be started by Resorts World in October for all employees both new and old. Resorts World Bimini has also invested significant sums of money into upgrading and refurbishing the communities of Bimini. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Our senior men's national basketball team will have a new coaching staff. Find out more coming up right here on The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. I'm Cheryl Conlis, and this is your Royal Fidelity Weekly Market Wrap. Commonwealth Bank, AML Foods, Cable Bahamas, and J.S. Johnson all enjoyed price increases despite a decline in trading volumes this week. AML Foods and First Caribbean both released their quarterly financials. Though still challenged from the sluggish economy, both companies posted positive returns. Please ensure you take the time to read the financials and the annual reports to understand and know how your companies are performing. As an investor, dividends are important, and although they can be earmarked for any purpose, once a company pays a dividend, reinvesting these sums is always your best option. Mark your calendars for the following dividend payment dates. Commonwealth Bank and Cable Bahamas, September 30th. Finco and AML Foods, October 3rd. Consolidated Water, November 14th. In international news, U.S. stocks continue to fluctuate as shares of Alibaba began trading and corporate takeovers boasted investors' optimism. Although the headlines are all about Baba, the below-the-surface trading will be centered on the upcoming expiration of a lot of financial options contracts. This event is known as quadruple witching, when futures and options contracts on the indexes and individual stocks expire. Here's your investment tip for the week. Save. Yes, you've heard it many times before, but what does this really mean? In these hard economic times with the implementation of VAT, it is extremely important to be prepared for what we are about to face. As the old folks say, be ready for rainy day. Saving an amount each month is the main tool in this preparation. At Royal Fidelity, we're here to assist you to get on the path of readiness. Please give us a call or visit our website at royalfidelity.com or Facebook page.